But after you've done all three, then you can go back and go into each individual wing and farm items to your heart's content. <laughs> you will fight alongside Horde and Alliance heroes. Um, Jaina makes an appearance, Sylvanas makes an appearance. And here we have the 2D layout for these three dungeon wings. Let you check out this for a second. And we have a preview. So now we're going to move on to some Cataclysm raids. Corey was showing you the five-player dungeons before. So this is an interesting shot. Um, if some of you did vanilla uh, WoW, you might recognize what this is. This is Nefarian's room, except there's one little thing that's different about that, and that's that portal. That portal back there? Uh, it's another raid. Oh, awesome. So since we have flying in Azeroth, we have a raid to get to it. You'll actually fly up into Nefarian's lair and enter in from the dungeon from there. Well, we thought that was going to be a cool thing. So we're calling it Blackwing Descent. And Nefarian will be returning. But it's an entirely new raid inspired by the original Blackwing lair. Uh, new art, new loot, new creatures. And also, you might see some old friends as well. But here's the layout for it. So you can see at the very bottom, that's um, the Nefarian's old room. And you come in, and you have this um, circular pathway with all the rooms, boss rooms around that. Now we're going to go into another Cataclysm uh, raid. It's called the Firelands. Again, a 10 and 25 player raid. And this is the elemental plane of fire. Um, if you've been to previous panels, you've heard talk about Ragnaros um, is attacking Hyjal from the elemental plane of fire. Well, you'll actually take the fight to him here. It's an exterior raid zone, which we're sort of excited about. And as mentioned, it's the home of Ragnaros, the Lord of Fire. And this is the time you can actually fight Ragnaros at his full strength because he's in the elemental plane of fire. This is his home. You will take the fight to him. And here's the layout. So you see this is an exterior um, area. There will be bo there's a boss that's wandering around. Um, there's bosses uh, you know, near lava lakes. And the big thing at the um, back would be Sulphuron Keep, which is where Ragnaros um, maintains his fortress. And here we say have some more awesome pieces of art, concept art for this. These are the kind of things you'll see um, outside in the Firelands. And here we have some, uh, this is concept art for what Sulphuron Keep will look like. So now I'm going to turn this back over to Corey, because uh, we've got even more things to tell you. <laughs> I think there's one more shot here. Yeah, here's a shot of the Keep. This is where you're actually going to fight Ragnaros. So, Anixia fifth anniversary. So this is something we're planning to do to celebrate WoW's fifth anniversary. Uh, we don't have the exact date. This is going to come out sometime around November. Uh, we're still figuring out the date, but it's definitely coming. Um, and what we've done here is gone back to Nixia, brought her back, but we brought her up to level 80. So she's ready to go to fight people that are, you know, that are max level right now in the game that want to go back. And for us, this was a chance. We didn't want to bring this back necessarily as you know, as something that we thought, you know, you're going to go in here and do this as a part of progression. This is something that we really thought that she was a key, key figure in World of Warcraft lore. For a lot of people, this is the first raid boss they ever fought against. And, you know, what, what better thing to do on an anniversary than bring back a fight like this and bring it back up to current times. So there's a few new mechanics here. 
I mean, it's still going to feel like the Anixia fight. We didn't go in and, you know, change things massively, but there's definitely new mechanics. She's got maybe a couple new spells, a couple new things, but it's definitely going to feel like the Anixia fight that you're used to. There's still many whelps. <laughs> yeah. You're definitely going to need more dots, for sure. <laughs> Uh, now, the, the most important part about this, probably to you guys, is the new and updated loot. So we, she's got an entirely new loot table, but the loot table is all based off of her original stuff. So you're going to be able to get all the Tier 2 helms. They're all going to be here with their original art, but all the stats have been updated to support the, the current level of itemization that we have in the game. Uh, we've also, not only are the Tier 2 helms updated, but also the weapons, uh, necklaces, things like Viscag. Uh, even better, you're still going to be able to get Quel Sarar here. And there's a new version that you'll be able to get from her. And of course, don't want to forget, we've added just a little bit more deep breath randomization. Try not to stand so close together. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, so here's a great shot. This is one of the coolest things you're going to get from Anixia. This is a flying mount. And so this is an epic flying mount, and it's going to be a very rare drop. You definitely have a chance to get it, but it's pretty rare. Um, and kind of the concept here is this is not necessarily modeled after her, but this is one of her broods, kind of in that middle phase. Um, and you'll be able to ride her as an epic flying mount throughout anywhere in Azeroth, uh, especially with Cataclysm coming. You could see this guy flying over the barrens. Who knows? So here's a couple shots of some of the loot. Um, this is original loot. Helm of Wrath and the Judgment Crown off original Anixia. You can see it's got still the full eight-piece sets on it. You can see the stats. It's a sweet 40 stamina here in this Helm of Wrath. And then this is a look at the new loot. So now we're up to 182 stamina. <laughs> Helm of Wrath here and then the Judgment Crown. You can see they've been updated to support all the current stats. They've got, uh, they've got slots for gems. Everything's ready to go. And in some cases, we've also took the loot and made new loot to support, now that we have specs, we've got to support all the specs. So here's the Judgment Crown broken up into three different versions to support all three different specs. And we've done this for all the loot so everyone can have something that fits their spec. So now here's a shot of a couple weapons that are going to be dropping off in Ixia. Now these are the original. Now, the Obsidian Edge Blade dropped in Molten Core, but we've taken some of that loot and put it on Anixia here to fill out her tables. Because originally, she only had two weapons that she dropped, so we wanted to update that. So we took some Molten Core loot and put it here. So here's an example. Here's Quel Sarar, Deathbringer, and the Obsidian Edge Blade. And then here's their versions that will be dropping on the new Anixia. So you can see they've been massively upgraded. You know, there's nothing like getting a new weapon. It really helps stat increase. So we really wanted to make sure that we wanted to get people here, get them a chance to experience this encounter. So we wanted loot to make sure that people would come. And I think this is definitely going to do it. So also, we've got a Nixia Welpling. I don't think anyone's actually seen this yet. We might have actually beat them to the punch on this one. It's good. So this is the Anixia Whelp. So anyone who logs into the game during, we're going to have a, a two or three long week phase where anyone that logs into the game will get a mail and you'll get the Anixia Whelp for logging in during the five year anniversary of WoW. Now you can't see it here, but uh, this Whelpling actually has some really cool, unique animations. Uh, she actually tries to deep breath occasionally every few minutes. Um, and, and she fails occasionally and just ends up blowing smoke rings. But it looks really awesome. We've got custom art on it that looks great. So to close this out, the last thing we wanted to talk about is a new feature that we're planning uh, that we haven't really talked about a lot yet, which is going to be cross-server LFG. And as you can imagine, what this is going to do is allow you to get into five-player instances with players that are on other realms. Now, now, the tech for this definitely supports raids, so we can definitely do this with raids, but we're going to kick it off with five player, see how it goes, and we're definitely going to open it up from there. It's going to start out working on your battle groups, and uh, you know, the same way that you can expect it, something very similar to the way battlegrounds work now. With crossover battlegrounds, it's, it's, we're looking to do something like that very similar here. Um, this is definitely something that is going to help pugs a ton. 
So if you can imagine, it's, you think it's really hard to find that group for whaling caverns right now, it's going to be a lot easier after this when you've got, you know, 20 or 30 servers of people that might need to do that quest. Now you can come here and, and be able to do that without necessarily having such a hard time finding people to play with. Big part of this is also going to be a reward system. So we definitely want to reward people for using this system to encourage them to take a part of it. And the concept here is uh, the same way in the LFG now, you can flag yourself as a leader, you can flag yourself as, a, as what your actual play style is. Uh, if you flag yourself as a leader and take a group through a dungeon in LFG, we actually want to reward you for that. So maybe there's some people that have never been in Whaling Caverns, but you're a pro at it. So you go into LFG and flag yourself as a leader. If you successfully complete the dungeon, you'll end up getting a reward for that. This is something we currently have on tap for patch 3.3.0. Uh, that's tentative, it's what we're shooting for. We think this is definitely something that we can get out before Cataclysm though, for sure. And that's, that's what we have for Dungeons and Raids, so I think we've got uh, about 15, 20 minutes for Q&A. Thank you guys. Mind if I hold it? Lock on. Uh, yeah, my question is for additional instances cannot be launched on servers. And uh, I actually have a solution for this too. Um, you guys are, have already initiated the battlegrounds queue from anywhere. Why not have a summoning stone just be a queue stone? Okay, well, the cannot launch more uh, instances problem, that's something that uh, right now we're having a problem with because literally so many of you are wanting to do instances. Um, there are, is an active solution for this that's actually being deployed right now. Some it's servers, in progress. Yeah, some servers already have the solution. Um, the tech that gets rid of that message that provides you with a whole lot more capacity to run instances is actually the same technology that allows cross-server LFG. Um, Right now, like I said, some realms have it. Um, they're deploying it right now on the rest of them. Um, it should probably within a month or two, all realms will have it. And you guys shouldn't see that message anymore unless the loot is really good and you want to do a whole lot of instances. <laughs> And as far as your question about um, the summoning stones and the way that'll work, the, the concept behind the LFG system is definitely, you're going to be able to use it from anywhere like LFG now, and it's definitely going to have a form of summoning. It's going to pull the players from the other instances directly to the instance to play with you. Yeah. So. Yeah, the LFG system is getting completely redone along with the cross-server LFG stuff, so. Yes, Bradley Roche, Lompoc. Um, Thank you for a great game, by the way, and the dungeons in particular. Uh, just want to know, since you've done Oxnixia, are you planning to go back and do any others just like you've done this? We currently don't have plans to go back and do anything else. Uh, Onyxia just came up, uh, like, I tried, like I mentioned, I think it was just a special case because she was you know, our first raid boss and we just thought it was, a, it was a chance to give players that maybe didn't get to see her a chance to see her and actually have it be worth something. And then also a chance for players to maybe relive a memory from where they had you know, maybe got that first piece of loot there to go back and do it again. I definitely think it's something that we would only do in a kind of a special case scenario. Statement. Just one statement. It's big. For the Alliance. <laughs> so the uh, Sons of Hodier, they really loved me when I went and like polished their helmet and stuff, but they didn't care when I saved their dad. Um, are you going to bring reputations back in raids and make them worthwhile again? Reputations in, ra in dungeons and raids are definitely something that we want to bring back in a different way. I mean, I think you could see the evolution of that a little bit through uh, Lich King with the, re the, the new reputation system where you could wear the tabard and earn a rep by doing heroic dungeons that way. Um, we've talked, we've had, been having a lot of talks about how we want to implement rep into these new dungeons. Um, unfortunately, we don't have Alex here. He's one of the guys that's actually heading that system up. Um, so we have plans for that, um, but we don't really have any more details on it right now. But we definitely want it. It's something we want to do. Uh, 
Uh, first of all, thanks for making a great game that's ridiculously addictive. The question I have is the progression of how raids have played out since Vanilla WoW was single target DPS 